I've built five high power rocket motors so far. Some work surprisingly well and others not so much. I'll take you through everything that worked, what didn't, and share some awesome test footage along the way. If you've been following this channel, this is kind of a recap of the full journey so far before I move on to my biggest series yet. The goal of the SN series was to create a high powered, reusable sugar rocket motor. Each motor had specific goals and challenges and I have a lot to share, so let's dive right in. Starting off with SN1, this was essentially my proof of concept. The motor measured 9.5 inches long, had a diameter of 2.25 inches, was fully loaded with 454 grams of propellant, and had an overall weight of 1,046 grams. The nozzle was made from 6061 aluminum and featured a converging half angle of 30 degrees, a diverging half angle of 15 degrees, a throat diameter of 0.5 inches, a throat length of 0.1 inches, and an exit diameter of 1 inch. Both the nozzle and bulkhead had two O-rings, one for sealing gases in, and the second one just for alignment. As you'll see later, that second O-ring ended up being unnecessary. The construction process for SN1 was quite difficult. I used a paper template to drill the radial bolt holes that hold the bulkhead and nozzle in place. That ended up being way too inaccurate, and because of that, there was only one exact orientation where everything would fit, which made assembly very frustrating. Despite that, SM1 became my most tested motor. It went through six static fires, although I only recovered data from five of them. During SM1's first test, the Arduino lost power. The motor still fired successfully, but I wasn't able to recover any usable data. Test 2 went better with a burn time of 3 seconds, a peak thrust of 146 newtons, a total impulse of 278 newton seconds, and a specific impulse of 62 seconds. By the 6th test, I added a finisil grain design and I also started using a better igniter. I won't go too deep into that now since I have an entire video covering it. Also, between tests, I rapidly upgraded the test site, which made the entire testing process smoother and faster. Static Fire 6 gave me a burn time of 3.5 seconds, a peak thrust of 179 newtons, a total impulse of 386 newton seconds, and a specific impulse of 87 seconds. The nozzle held up well during its six tests, but had substantial erosion near the throat and converging side of the nozzle. The casing and bulkhead were in great shape, aside from a little discoloration. Overall, SN1 was a solid proof of concept. It gave me a baseline to build on before getting into more advanced designs. Once SN1's test campaign wrapped up, I moved on to SN2, a motor designed to be more powerful and more reusable. Real quick, before we get into SN2, I'd like to give a big shout out to JLC CNC for supporting these projects. They've been a huge help turning my designs into actual hardware. I use their CNC machining service for precise rocket motor parts, fast, affordable, and exactly to spec. Their website makes it super easy to upload your design, get an instant quote, and place your order within just a few clicks. They've got no minimum order quantity, whether you're making one part or a thousand, and they ship straight from their in-house facility. If you're into prototyping, engineering, or even just building cool stuff in your garage, I highly recommend checking them out. They even offer multiple different materials and finishes, so you can dial in your design exactly the way you want. JLC CNC makes turning ideas into real hardware both affordably and simple. Plus, their customer support is super responsive. They've helped me out when I need to make last minute tweaks to one of my parts. Use the link on the top of the description to explore their site and get started. Huge thanks to JLC CNC for supporting this series and helping bring these motors to life. SN2 was slightly longer at 11.5 inches, kept the same 2.25 inch diameter and carried 580 grams of propellant. The nozzle had a converging half angle of 44 degrees, a diverging half angle of 15 degrees, a slightly smaller throat diameter of 0.45 inches, a longer throat length of 0.15 inches, in the same one inch exit diameter. This time, I added a custom stainless steel insert to the aluminum nozzle to protect from heating and erosion while keeping the weight down. You'll see how that held up later. I also designed a custom jig for drilling the bolt holes accurately and added a lip to the nozzle and bulkhead to make assembly way easier, which honestly made a huge difference. SN2's first test went really well. It had a burn time of 3.3 seconds, a peak thrust of 272 newtons, a total impulse of 594 newton seconds, and a specific impulse of 107 seconds, a huge step up from SN1's final test. I also experimented with many different additives in the propellant, such as red iron oxide, aluminum powder, and more. 
During test four, I added sodium lauryl sulfate in the propellant, which is a surfactant meant to reduce surface tension and improve the casting process. Unfortunately, the addition of SLS affected the propellant burn. SN2's fourth test burn was 3.6 seconds with a peak thrust of 172 newtons, a total impulse of 469 newton seconds, and a specific impulse of 82 seconds. I was also able to fire SN2 in my custom flame trench. It was super helpful for testing the motor mounting setup and how the motor would react in a flight-like orientation. Also, it was pretty surprising how it ripped up the concrete in the flame diverter. The nozzle stainless steel insert held up great across its four static fires. The only erosion happened right where the stainless steel insert met the aluminum body near the throat. Overall, SN2 was a big step forward. It helped me narrow in in my propellant formula, the same one I use for the rest of my motors, and really helped streamline my casting process. If you're interested in the propellant formula I use, or how I cast the propellant, check out my video I have linked in the description below. Building off the successes of SN2, I decided to go with a full stainless steel nozzle for SN3. Even with this nozzle being heavier, SN3's dry mass was still 250 grams less than SN2's. I got there by cutting away as much unnecessary material as possible. At this point, I was trying to optimize for weight with the idea of potentially flying one of these motors. And honestly, I think this is the coolest looking nozzle I've built so far. The geometry was slightly different with a 45 degree converging half angle, 15 degree diverging half angle, a 0.4 inch throat diameter, 0.25 inch throat length, and the same one inch exit diameter. This nozzle geometry became the standard for the rest of my motors. SN3 had the same 2.5 inch diameter casing, but carried a significantly larger propellant load at 908 grams. To even cut more dry mass, I removed the alignment O-ring and trimmed the bulkhead and nozzle shorter. But that meant the radial bolts ended up very close to the edge of the casing, and that's gonna be very important in a minute. For SN3's first test, I again added a bit of SLS, but less this time, hoping to avoid any performance issues. The SLS ended up causing issues, but this test produced a burn time of 5.7 seconds, a peak thrust of 333 newtons, a total impulse of 620 newton seconds, and a specific impulse of 74 seconds. Then came test two, and things got a bit interesting. Those radial bolts, the ones placed too close to the edge, completely ripped out of the casing. The nozzle launched into the air and took forever to find, especially with all the snow on the ground. I had calculated that the bolts would be strong enough, and they were, for the first test, but I didn't account for the fatigue over the first firing. After the first run, the aluminum weakened, and test two tore it apart. But the nozzle came out flawless, no erosion, no damage, fully reusable. SN3 was a major turning point. It gave me my first reusable nozzle and taught me a lot about bolt placement and fatigue. The goal for SN4 was to reduce the dry mass even more by using a new material for the nozzle, hard coat anodized aluminum. I was skeptical if it would hold up, but the only way to find out was to try it. SN4 had the same nozzle geometry as SN3, the same casing diameter, but the motor itself was a bit shorter and used 645 grams of propellant. Taking lessons from SN3, I moved the radial bolts further from the casing edge, but that shifted them closer to the O-ring groove, which you'll see became its own problem. This was also my first time using a pressure transducer. I drilled a 1 8 inch MPT thread into the bulkhead and packed the sensor with grease for protection. To make sure the force went through the load cell and not the pressure transducer, I designed a custom adapter just to isolate the pressure transducer. From the test footage, the nozzle did not last long. Early into the burn, it blew out the side and sprayed molten aluminum at my GoPro. Thankfully, I was able to fix my camera. SM4's first and only test gave a runtime of 3.4 seconds, a peak thrust of 289 newtons, a total impulse of 391 newton seconds, and a specific impulse of 62 seconds. The max pressure from the pressure transducer was 312 psi. Also, if you watch closely, you'll see gas leaking around the bulkhead. Under pressure, the bulkhead shifted slightly, causing the radial bolts to move to the outside of the holes on the casing. That slightly exposed the O-rings, allowing gas to escape. 
which could have led to a full rud if it gotten worse. Still, SN4 was an exciting test and it was worth exploring an alternative nozzle material. SN5 was the final motor in the series and I built it with all the knowledge I learned up to this point. Since I wasn't flying it, I wasn't too concerned about the dry mass. I stuck with the same casing size as SN4, used 645 grams of repellent, and made a couple key changes. First, I repositioned the bolt holes in the nozzle and bulkhead to prevent gas leaks. Second, I went back to a fully stainless steel nozzle with extra mass on the diverging side to help dissipate heat and make it even more reusable. I also reused the same pressure transducer setup as SN4. This test also had the most cameras by far, 8 total, to capture every angle. SM5 had a burn time of 2.8 seconds, a peak thrust of 427 newtons, a total impulse of 723 newton seconds, and a specific impulse of 114 seconds. The peak pressure was 453 psi. There's still more room to improve the specific impulse, but that just means more time refining the propellant. Just like SN3, the stainless steel nozzle held up perfectly. Although slightly heavy, this motor was fully reusable and ready to go again. If you want to see a full deep dive on SN5, that video is linked in the description. I also added links for SN3 and SN4's deep dive video as well. And that wraps up the SN series rocket motors. I've learned a ton from building and testing these five designs, and I collected a lot of useful data along the way. If you're doing similar research or want access to my data, feel free to send me an email and I'm happy to send it over. For my next big series, I'll be using everything I learned from this series to build a much larger and more advanced rocket motor, and hopefully make it reusable too. Make sure to subscribe and turn post notifications on so you don't miss any behind the scenes updates. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment, and like. And if you'd like to support my work, you can buy me a cup of coffee. Thanks.